Um, before we um, before we move <clears throat> forward, I want to go to um, the past. First, let's go to the ancient past. Yeah, Tim, you say that um, almost every prophet of old, like Old Testament prophets, uh, prophesied, foresaw America. I, I don't think a lot of people believe that. Yeah, uh, that's, can you... that's that's right. That's that's not a super popular idea. I, no. I hear a lot. I hear a lot that uh, well, America nowhere, doesn't exist. It's nowhere doesn't exist in the Bible. In the Bible therefore, yeah. it's going to disappear off the face. You know what? I have a very different uh, idea. A very different theory. I believe that these ancient prophets knew of the promised land of America. I believe that, uh, that. Well, there's all sorts of prophecies about who the lost tribes would be and where they would go. Uh, and really, you need to read the book to get the whole context. I won't be able to do it in, in, in a quick uh, interview. Uh, but I believe, and I believe the evidence is strong, that, there, that God led migrations out of Israel and that they, he led them to the promised land of America. This was another exodus uh, of, of sorts. The uh, pilgrims believed it. Columbus believed it. All of yes. them believed mm-hmm. they were f- completing the journey that Moses started. All of them. Yes. All of them. Absolutely. And they called George, I mean, when George Washington came to town, they called him their Moses. Yeah. Their Joshua. Uh, th- this was a theme that, yeah, this isn't so much my idea as, this goes as it was the, the Pilgrim's this, idea. This goes to Bruce Feiler's book. Do you remember Bruce Feiler's American book? Prophet. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome book. Yeah, awesome book. Yes. And here's a, here's a guy who's Jewish who says, look at the role of Moses every single time in American history. It's Moses. It is the completion. The Statue of Liberty is Moses. It is. She's holding the two tablets of the law. It's Moses breaking the chains of slavery. That's what that is. And and Bruce's book is also complemented by another book. I don't know if you heard of the book called The Harbinger by Jonathan Kahn. I have heard of it. I don't think I've read it. Best-selling book. Him and I have been been talking this week. Um, he, He says the same thing. He's also a, he's, he's a Messianic Jew, runs the, Jeru- the Jerusalem Center, he has a ministry, unbelievable book, says the exact same thing that I'm saying. The covenant has been extended from Israel, from ancient Israel, to America. If you look at the arc of history, there had to be a plan to restore Israel, and it is, it's, it's my contention that we were that peace, we were that plan. We've done it. Now the question is, we've done our job. Are we done as a nation? More in a second. Glenn Beck. Maybe two years ago, uh, I went to a few scholars, including uh, Dr. Peter Lilback, and I said, I'm telling you, we made a covenant, and our founders knew it, and it was all leading up to the founding of Israel. And the question will be whether we are now, if we've outlived our usefulness because we're no longer living the covenant. And um, uh, Peter said to me, Glenn, I, uh, you know, he's a formal scholar on George Washington and his religious writings. And he said, I, I don't think you can make that case. And I said, Peter, would you just look? He was on the show a couple of months ago and he wrote a little book about that big just on what George Washington said about Israel. He called me up and he said, Glenn, I, and believe it or not, I think you're right. I think you're right. And it is. It only makes common sense. There's, we talked about this earlier today. America's Prophet. This is Bruce Feiler. Excellent book. Great book. It's about how America, all the way from the pilgrims and, and, uh, and um, uh, Columbus, knew. They knew they were coming over. Uh, I haven't read this. You've got to read it. i got to read it. Yes. Okay. Um, and then McCullough. I was at um, I was at uh, Federal Hall yesterday. I went on what Stu is calling the Harbinger tour um, because I'm reading this book that everybody was you know, everybody has said to me, "You need to read this book um, called The Harbinger." And I read it over the weekend, and I'm I'm doing my homework on it. Um, my first impression is it's absolutely right, but I haven't I haven't done my homework on it. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it could be misread as, you know, God's punishing America. No, that's not what he's saying. Um, he's saying that we have made a covenant and we've broken it and God's trying to wake us up. So I went down to, um, ground zero yesterday for Memorial day 
and um, and I um, I started at Federal Hall. Now, Federal Hall is where the president, George Washington, first took the oath of office. Most Americans don't even know. We might be pre- uh, we might be patriotic, but most Americans don't even know that George Washington didn't didn't take the oath of office in Washington because Washington didn't exist. And he stood there at a building. You've probably seen it a million times. You've probably seen the big, huge statue that is across the street from the New York Stock Exchange of George Washington. And he's facing the New York Stock Exchange right on Wall Street. And he has his hand out. Now, I stood there with my children yesterday, and I said, why is the president's hand out? Why is he standing there like that? And his, his hand is out, and it's palm down. And it took a couple of guesses before I think Cheyenne said, the Bible. He had his hand on the Bible. And I said, yes. He was taking the oath of office, and he said, um, so help me God. And... It was difficult to have this conversation. In fact, I wanted to go up and, and you know, kind of like on the Lincoln Memorial where we've touched some of the words on the Lincoln Memorial. I couldn't go up because there was this group of, they're like African Jews or something. I don't know. It's this, do you know that, have you ever seen these guys? Uh, black Hebrew is- Israelites? Yes. Black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. These guys are out on the street all the time. And I don't know, about five years ago, I... I stopped in Times Square just to listen to them. I was fascinated by them. And I listened to them, and, and basically, it's been a while since I listened to them, but basically, um, all the real Jews are black. And um, so kill Whitey. And one of them was standing there, two of them were standing there with a megaphone, and they were standing right on the pedestal of George Washington. And as I'm talking to my kids about why is George Washington's hand out there, these guys are, quote, quoting the Bible about how the Israelites are going to kill all the whiteies and the real Israelites are all uh, african Americans. Still in the Bible. Still in Bible country. Mm-hmm. And um, it was an amazing thing. And I had to have a conversation about freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. There you go. How about a little bit of freedom of speech? So it's somebody was shouting behind us, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah. In this country, you do have the right to be an absolute moron. But it was it was incredible to me um, how far we've come. And then I went to uh, the World Trade Center site where they're not allowed to talk about God. Which, again, fascinates me on how far we have come. The um, uh, the Harbinger, if you haven't read it, is a fascinating... I wrote everybody, what was it, Friday? Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, hey, everybody, get the Harbinger and read it this weekend. Yeah, which was awesome, because it's not like it was Memorial Day weekend when we were going to go out picnics mm-hmm. and, and have mm-hmm. a fun, relaxing weekend on our own. You could write, You could read it in one day. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly the amount of days extra we had off this weekend, the one day. So thank you for that. And that was that's wonderful. Yeah, You're welcome. Mm-hmm. And it was even if it was so important, it was like forget in the garden of beasts, mm-hmm. read the harbinger. <laughs> it really was. I did yeah. say that. Yeah, she did say that. Yeah, I didn't say that to and Stu so because Stu is I was ready. deep into in the garden of beasts, and I put that down, <laughs> and went out looking for the harbinger. Oh, did you did you search a long time? I all did. The way, all the way did. in that well, I told big you. Amazon library. I, I told you I had my to plate. go hoof it. I was tired. <laughs> I couldn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance afterwards. I was so tired looking in the Amazon.com library. My Kindle app was not working. Yeah. And then they didn't have it on iBooks. So I actually had to go to a physical bookstore. So oh, yeah. my yeah. goodness. It was awful. It was awful. It was an awful experience. Yeah, it was. I yeah, you never want to never experience anything like that. Well, not in a long time, and yeah. it was very traumatic. And now <laughs> yeah. I'm really tired. Right, and I can't talk anymore. Was it? Is it I'm I tired. don't even know when it came out. I don't either, but it's in paperback already. So it was 2009. Was it that long ago? Yeah. 
It's really quite. It good. did really well. It was. Did you think it was good? Bestseller. Yeah, it was interesting. It, it, uh, it's good. It's you know I'm not a big fiction guy, so you know some of it I like. You know what it reminded me yeah. of? Of uh, uh, what was that book? Uh, Celestine Prophecy. Do you remember that yeah. came out in the yeah. '90s? Mm-hmm. And you know it was a big seller, and it was kind of like, and then uh, a mysterious thing happened. This guy dressed in a magic hat came to me. I don't remember what the story was, but it was this, and it was to teach you these principles along the way. That's kind of the same thing on on this, right? The delivery it, system is is through a story, like it's a fictional story that tells you things that are true that from the actually Bible. Actually happened, such. yeah, right. And I, to me, the the fictional story aspect is is distracting to me. It's like I, I I'm not the normal maybe the normal reader. I, I like to just get the information. Like I like nonfiction mm-hmm. reading. I don't like mm-hmm. fiction reading. Well, this particular book you could. If you took the a fiction out, you could tell it in about 15 pages. Right, which is how I felt about uh, three hours in. It's like, I feel like I, I, I know what's mm-hmm. coming here. There's going to be about nine things he's going to tell me. I'd like to know them right now. <laughs> <laughs> like all nine right now on one page. Thank you. But it's, yeah. it's, uh, an incredible, it's an incredible story and an incredible nine things. We're doing our homework on it because I, I, I mean, I want to talk to the author. And um, I'd like to do a special on it because I, I think those nine things are absolutely right. And the point of it is, I wrote it up on the chalkboard today. The bricks are fallen down. We will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. It's what ancient Israel said in 1732, uh, uh, 732 BC. And it's what we said in 2001. And it comes from Isaiah. And it's, I mean, word for word, it's exactly what we said um, after the World Trade Center. I don't think anybody said we were going to change the, the, our sycamores into cedars. I don't think anybody said that word for word. No, we, I, actually, I we, just, no, we just actually did it. <laughs> yes, we did say we, we, we will rebuild. No, 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 no. You haven't gotten to the point yet. You haven't read very far, have you? Yeah, I have. I've yeah, read no. pretty far. Listen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. third yeah, and no. halfway I'm, through. I'm, yeah. on the, I'm on in in the Harbinger. We actually... The <laughs> Harbin. I didn't get to jury yet, but Harbin... No, I've we copied. actually said those things. We quoted several, several politicians quoted Isaiah. Quoted them. Yeah, but... I know, but, but they're it, saying... They're saying... I don't know if it, if it's the way he thinks we meant it. No, no, no. He's saying, uh, 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 I don't know, I'm not going to speak yeah, for him. Yeah. Don't want to speak for him. Let me, let me just put it this way. I don't think we, that quote from Isaiah is a thumb in God's eye. That's defiance. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that George Bush or, you know, Nancy Pelosi or whoever else said it, they knew that that was, a, that was like opening up the Bible, like, that's a happy phrase. Let's do that one. We're going to rebuild. I don't think that, I don't think that they meant that as a thumb in God's eye. I think they were looked at that and said, hey, yeah, uh, okay, the bricks have fallen, and we're going to put hewn stones up. And it might have been a thumb in the eye of Al-Qaeda. Yes, but that's not the point. The point of that, and the point of this story is, is that everything that we've done, it doesn't matter the intention. Yeah. Everything that we've done has been a thumb in the eye. When George Washington stood there and put his hand on the Bible and said, so help me God... We made a covenant, Mm -hmm. and um, we have Mm -hmm. violated that. And so God's trying to wake us up, not by punishing us, but by he can't protect us. It's like any any of our kids. We could say to our kids, and we have. Pat, I know you've said this to several of your kids. As our kids get older, I've said it to mine, I can't help you. You know, my my kids wanted to go to, um, Mm -hmm. uh, to Europe this summer. Go ahead. You're old enough to make your own decision. You want to go to Europe? Have a good time. Daddy's not going to help because I won't be able to. I can't help you. If you go over there and it breaks down, right now you have England saying again today, Cameron is looking for ways to get the English out of Europe in case it breaks down. If you go over there, that's fine. I recommend don't do it. But if you do and it breaks down, I can't help you. That's not a punishment for me. That's just the way it is. And that's the same with God. He's not punishing. He's just saying, I can't help you anymore. And unless you do what I tell you, I can't help you anymore. And I think it's, a, it's an amazing book that um, I had dinner with a rabbi last night, because this is from I, Isaiah. And I, I had dinner with a rabbi, and I said, 
about halfway through, I said, let me talk to you about uh, Isaiah 10, 9, and he, or 9, 10. And he said, the bricks and sycamore thing? And I said, yes, yes. And he said, what about it? And I told him, and he said, I don't like to speak for God and saying that that's what God's intending here with us. But I will say that, yeah, it sure sounds like what God does. And I think that is a discussion that we need to have in our society. The problem is we don't have any way to discuss it like that. We don't have any way in our society to have a a rational conversation about God stuff. And that's why he puts this, I think that's why this author puts it in a storyline. Because you don't have any way to have a serious conversation. Because we've so relegated that to crazy talk. We have to. Have to have that conversation. Have to find a way to it.